Sean Mendez isn't gay, and that's okay. It's the Going Off Podcast with Rap Critic and Muse. You sent me a video on Twitter, and I didn't really yes. get a chance to look at it, but a, the fucking title alone <laughs> uh, gave me pause. Apparently the Wu-Tang Clan performed on Good Morning America for some reason. If that's not the most, like, <laughs> like just like... These uh, things don't belong together, but okay, it's, you know, tw- uh, uh, Wu-Tang Clan is reaching that point where it's like, it's a historical thing now, not just like a hip-hop thing. You know, it's the same thing. It's that nostalgia. Doing. Exactly, and so they're getting those those dollars. Th- those people who listen to the Wu-Tang Clan, you know, uh, in, in the 90s when they first came out, you know, they're reaching that 40 uh, Good Morning America demographic, you know what I'm saying? Man. It's so funny to look at the GMA, like my brain just immediately thinks like grandma. <laughs> <laughs> And it's like, and here we have Wu Tang Clan in the '90s, the pinnacle of cool, on a show that looks like it's called Grandma. It's fucking bizarre, dude. But notice, notice that they're performing the song that when we talked about songs that are edited on the album, they're performing "Protect Your Neck," the song that on the album was the only one that was entirely edited. And that's specifically why I wanted to bring it up because it's just like not only that because it's like you know you could say like, hey man, you know Method Man was on. Wendy Williams show or, or the talk soup or something like that so you know hey you know people they're grown men you know mm-hmm. who cares about you know where what label goes where hey Snoop Dogg's on on a Martha Stewart show like who gives a right. fuck about labels yeah. anymore you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying but it's specifically the fact that they decided to perform protect your neck which I thought was pretty cool at first because they had you know uh ODB's son there ah uh, okay and, cool and I'm like oh this is pretty cool and, you know, the performance is the usual sort of, like, you know, 20 dudes on stage, you know, they're repeating every couple of lines, kind of like a Beastie Boys thing, which I uh, think is yeah. cool, but it's, like, for the most part, like, they seem slightly, like, they're, like, and this is the issue that I have with, like, most live performances. It feels like people are, especially rappers, they're, like, slightly behind the beat of the song, and it's, like, you can hear, it's just, like, it's hard for them to catch up, and you just, like... <laughs> Come on, just, <laughs> like, oh, don't you hear the beat? Did you not do a sound check? Or, but, you know, that, that feels like a thing I don't even want, I don't want to hate too much on, because I was just like, I mean, what if I do a show one day, and I ain't get that fucking sound check, and I look like fucking Boo Boo the Fool off beat and shit. You know, so it's like, I don't want to hate on that too hard. Uh, dude, dude, look. I, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm looking in the audience. <laughs> ah, <laughs> a lot of adults it, in the building. <laughs> It's middle-aged white people, right? and they're awkwardly doing the yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, oh you guys fuck! Don't listen to oh, this at all. <laughs> oh my! Why? Why? Look, right, that, I see, mean, that's uh, what I'm saying right there. You know, it's like it's not that you can't have this. I was like, I know you guys aren't listening to this. <laughs> you know, at least, at least when Oprah had that one big performance, I forget what it even was. It was like this big outdoor thing so it must have been like an anniversary event or something she had black eyed peas on and like i could see that because black eyed peas probably have a crossover <laughs> audience with the older demographic because they're because they're fucking top 40 pop you know they're not fucking a nostalgia act with all due respect why else would you be on good morning america performing protected neck if it wasn't for nostalgia who have no connection to the audience yeah, they were not getting on Good Morning America in 1994. Like, that wasn't happening. <laughs> By the way, it is worth noting that when the Black Eyed Peas performed, um, I Got a Feeling, they changed the line to, Get off that sofa! Let's, let's watch Oprah! <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, that hurts. 24 seasons, let's give it up. Look how she smashes, like on my car. Jump off that sofa. Keep watching. Over. Oh. Speaking of which, speaking of which, so we had some we had some edits for this episode, and maybe I mean uh, not for this episode for for this performance. You know, nine rappers, the people behind the scenes, maybe probably know only two of them. So you know, in general, this is just a huddle of you know dangerous looking black people. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So they got that mute button on fucking standby, and boy, do they use it. Can the people 
who are doing the muting, can they at least, like, have a lyric sheet in front of them or some shit? Because this was horrible. <laughs> like, and the thing is, you know, they always have the thing of, like, hey, you know, you know this is going to be on mainstream television. Censor yourself so we mm -hmm. don't have to do it for you. And there's a couple of times where, like, they actually censor themselves and it's like, it's all good. There's some times where it's like, I can actually hear that they're not, like, I can actually hear that they are censoring themselves. And, like, there's parts where, like, it's not even a curse word or even, like, that suggestive of a thing. Oh. And it's just complete, like, like blocks of silence for no reason. And I look back at the lyrics just to be like, wait, what are the things they're cutting out? So, uh, the first thing they cut out is Inspector Dex verse, right? Where he says, um... The whole, the whole thing. No, no, no. <laughs> but they basically... It's actually pretty funny. There's one verse on here, like, You God's verse. Basically, like, it's only four lines and, like, a fourth of it gets cut out. <laughs> but um before we get to that so like inspected that first of all he says the line the hellraiser raising hell with the flavor terrorize the jam like troops in pakistan that does not get edited but okay. what does get edited is so uh tick tock and keep and then ticking while i get you flipping off the shit that i'm kicking uh -huh. that gets edited ticking while i get you flipping off the shit that i'm kicking that all was edited wow <laughs> was like, because he thought he was going to say shit? Like, I don't understand. <laughs> so the next line is, The Vandal, too hot to handle. This is the line that's edited. You battle and you're saying goodbye like Tevin Campbell. I'm thinking, all right, uh, what did Tevin Campbell do that was maybe bad? You know, like, he was in a goofy mood. Because, you know, maybe it's like a reference to something. He was basically uh, outed in the worst way. He solicited sex from mm. another man in a bathroom or something like that and at first i'm thinking like okay what does it even fucking matter like prostitutes or homosexual whatever right. in a elementary school bathroom was the oh, <laughs> i was like no. oh no oh no and then like apparently the thing was that like it was actually like that was a hot spot for that that oh, specific that's fucking weird. And i was just like oh my god oh my god and it's like okay i can imagine why you know some people might be like eh we don't want to have nothing to do with this. And it really fucking sucks because it's just like, dude, this is this dude. You know, nobody knew he was gay before. So it's just like, BT Dubs, he's also that. Also, he's a criminal soliciting sex at an elementary school. It's just like, oh, <sighs> fuck. He says, uh, I'm going to get mad deep like a threat, blow up your projects, and take all your oh. assets. That line? Okay. That Rayquan oh, line? Mm, okay. <laughs> Getting deep like a threat and blowing up your projects, that's good to go. Uh, with the thoughts that bomb shit like math. And of course they said, shh, you know, they didn't actually say the word. So that, that right. was good to go. But he <laughs> says, this is what's edited. So if you want to try and flip, go flip on the next man. Because I'll grab the clip and hit you with. And then it comes back in at 16 shots and more I got. So I'm thinking like. Move, what maybe, the fuck? Yeah, I'm thinking like, maybe it's edited because of the gun references, right? Yeah. Grab you, grab the clip and hit you. With, but then it comes back in at 16 shots. I'm like, well, okay, well, that can't be it. I think the way delay works, or at least the way it used to, is that it drops eight seconds at a time. I remember on the radio, if someone was just going off on a fucking tear, like they just weren't stopping, you would hit the button, and it would take out eight seconds, but then you had to wait another eight seconds for the delay to, like, replenish. Mm. Because it only, it can only, it's only eight seconds in the past. So you can't just hit it again oh. and go back even more time because you're only allowed that eight seconds. So, yeah, they probably wanted to cut that whole thing, but couldn't. That's funny. There's another lyric where he says, um, you know, Method Man. It's the Method Man for short, Mr. Meth. And he says, set it off. And then this is where it gets cut. Get it off like a gat. I want a break. And, but then it comes back in at cock me back. All right. That's kind of weird. You know, uh, but again, censoring the gun metaphor, maybe he didn't know that cock me back was also a gun metaphor, but whatever. And now this is what I kind of get. Check out the flow like the Hudson or PCP when I'm dusting. Mm, it's like, all right, okay. PCP reference, I get but that. But you are cutting out the local Hudson River reference, so. I, I, right. Ah, double-edged sword. Dustin Brothers off. Because I'm hot like, and then it cuts off at sauce. Like that that's the one, that's the part I don't get. I'm hot like sauce. And so it's just I'm hot like 
<laughs> and I'm like, really? Sauce? But then the next line is, the smoke from the lyrical blunt makes me cough. And I'm uh, like, all right, well. well. <laughs> <laughs> now I get it. <laughs> <laughs> but then you guy comes in and he just goes, <laughs> It's just complete. Ooh, what the <laughs> fuck like, were they thinking? The audience is like, "Who's that?" <laughs> <laughs> um, but the original line is, and it's not that great of a line anyway. What? Grab my nut. Get screwed. So we have ODB coming in. Oh, excuse me, Young DB. ODB son, first time making a television like a real Whoa. television appearance. Yeah, it's kind of cool. And then he comes in. He goes like. First things first, complete block of just silence for like eight seconds. That's a hilarious setup. <laughs> first things first. First things first. Never mind. <laughs> first things first, man. You. And you just see him. He's giving all his energy. Aww. And it's just no sound. <laughs> but to be fair, the lyric is. First things first, man, you're fucking with the worst. I'll be sticking pins in your head like a fucking nurse. But is he saying this? I really wanted to hear what they edited it to. Because, like, there's no way they didn't tell him to censor that, right? I'm looking at this audience, right? And as previously mentioned, they're older, white folks, very reserved. You know, they all look like they have no idea who the fuck Wu-Tang even is. They were there for the show. Let alone the lyrics. <laughs> it just happened to be Wu-Tang Day. They got in for free. They're just there for the show. If they started actually dropping these fucking lyrics, you know their faces would be like, the fuck is this? They wouldn't put that on. <laughs> they wouldn't have them. They wouldn't let them do yeah. that. And, and then I, I do have to say, fucking Ghostface Keller looking fresh as fuck in the polo. There you go. I was like, holy shit. <laughs> Of course, the most flavorful dude out of the whole clan, you know. Dude, that just, but, that just reminded me, really quick aside, I read that story uh, that you posted of how they got um, ODB for the Mariah Carey music video. <laughs> and how he goes, I can't oh, be in a shit. video without clothes. <laughs> after he said, after they asked him, do you want us to buy your clothes? He goes, nah, man, I'm hip hop. I'm just going to wear a shirt and some Tims. That's all I need. <laughs> and then he demanded they take him out to buy clothes. And then he still came to the shoot wearing his jeans and Tim's. Like, what was he thinking? Was he just fucking with them? Was he just fucking with them? He had a Louis Vuitton bag and said, oh, I'm going to wear this in the video. And then just did it. He just bought all this shit on their dime. <laughs> And then, when you think about how he actually looks in the video, like, have you actually watched the video? Yes. I also think it's kind of funny how it's just like, it's... This was one of those videos where it's like, yeah, hip-hop and R&B hybrid crossover, and they are not in the same room. What's up with that? Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, it's like, you know they were not, like, just hanging out like it was That's all so good. so weird, because it even says, like, he had started drinking peach schnapps because Mariah turned him on to them. So, like, obviously they were <laughs> cool. Yeah, see, that, that was the thing that was weird. Because I remember at first it being like... Oh, yeah, of course you'll have the rapper on, but you don't actually, you know, fuck with him. But then, of course, later on you find out behind the scenes. <laughs> yeah, they actually fuck with each other. Oh, did you hear about the the one time he was supposed to do a, a record with LL Cool J? No. And, yeah, he apparently, like, pissed on LL Cool J's plaques and they kicked him out. Oh, my God. The fuck? Described how he and Simmons would take recording and wrap it around the mic to create a loop. There were no samples back then. He demonstrated how his fingers were his drum machine. And then he recalled how Wu-Tang Clan's notorious wild boy, ODB, urinated on LL Cool J's plaque. LL was supposed to join the session that day, but he didn't come in. As a result of LL's absence, King said ODB walked over and pulled LL's record off the wall and pissed on it. No cleanup occurred. I still have the record with the piss all over it! <laughs> what the fuck? Holy shit! Wait, who's this again? <laughs> uh, let me see. John King, the founder of Chung King Records. Damn, I was about to get these legs, but that kind of stole the <laughs> show. Um, <laughs> let me see. Where he says, oh yeah, Ghostface Killer, he says, uh, there's more again. Catch it, and then this gets cut out. Like a psycho flashback. I love Gats. If rap was a gun, you wouldn't bust back. That yeah. one I get. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's, that's pretty gun-centric. Yeah, I think it's fair to say any gun 
related line is uh isn't gonna be by the way this is early morning programming like this isn't just like yeah. he wasn't on the fucking Stephen <laughs> Colbert show and like basic cable yeah like he'd probably be able to get away with a bit more this is early morning people are like getting ready for work yeah, you're getting ready to work. Like, Wait, is that the Wu Tang Clan? I'm gonna be late. Yeah, you know. I don't think I'm ever gonna see this again. I have to see this. <laughs> right. You have uh, Riz's line, which is the most confusing. Cause this is the one where I, I I called it. So the line is, "Yo, chill with the feedback, Black. We don't need that. It's ten o'clock, ho. Where the fuck's your seat at?" But you can hear actually. He says, "Uh, yo, chill with the feedback," and then cut, and then you hear, "Where is your seat at?" So it's just like, well, he did edit it, mm. but for some reason, Black, we don't need that, and it's 10 o'clock, is still <laughs> just not good mm. to go. <laughs> Maybe there were just one too many curse words within that couplet, and they were just like, just for safety. Oh yeah, just fucking take the whole block out. <laughs> so Jamie Kelly requested System of a Down's Toxicity. Thank you very much, Jamie. And if you would like to do a request... It's only that one-time donation go to either one of our Patreons. And, bro, whoo, we got to talk about this shit. First of all, a little background. I, looking up the information for this, I didn't know that this came out the week before 9-11. It's funny, Holy right? Shit. Like, I was recently watching a uh, They Might Be Giants documentary. And they the last thing they filmed or the last thing they show in the documentary is them performing at a Tower Records on September 10th because oh their God. album is dropping tomorrow. And I'm like, shit, this is the same fucking Jay-Z release date. Oh, a lot of shit was supposed to happen on September 11th. Damn. God damn. Did, terror, did the terrorists of the time be like, wait, let's make sure like we're syncing this up with a whole bunch of report and other shit happening. Her Jay-Z's album was coming out, yo. That is <laughs> odd let's fucking do it. that that would happen around, that that would kind of correlate or line up with the system of a down album. A fucking politically charged as fuck. Man. Before 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 the the political uh musical, you know, side of the early 2000s really even kicked off like that. We had Rage doing shit in the early 90s, yeah, but they, they were, were like the, the only like hard rock shit that were really fucking getting their shit out there. System of a Down is almost a bit in, in the most respectful way possible, they're almost a bit more mainstream. Mm -hmm. Like, Definitely. I think more people fucked with System of a Down than they did I mean, Rage. I mean, look, Chop Suey's a classic, a yeah. mainstream classic. Just uh, Like, I feel like that's going to be the Bohemian Rhapsody of the 2000s. Also, it, it, it's a bit that Rage's songs were way more, like, wordy. And they, were, and they were very direct about what they were about. Extremely <laughs> direct. They weren't vague about anything. You knew exactly what the fuck the song was about. On this album, uh, they're a bit more vague on some of the songs. They kind of leave it up in the air. Well, except for track one. <laughs> See, that's the thing. Woo! When you actually, when you name a song Prison Song, <laughs> yeah, that's the most direct uh, you're going to get. And, um... That's that, that is how it ends up, because the other songs that are about things, they kind of tiptoe around it or don't really acknowledge it at all. They um, it's kind of weird the way they write songs because it's just like yeah. the the delivery is so in your face and yet the wording is so like not as much like bounce where it's just like you know I, I someone told me that it's about group sex mm. but it's just like that's not really a parrot. I mean, like, it's yeah, the, no. the, the silly way he talks, but it's just like, there's no direct thing unless you count the lyric near the end where he's like, I like being behind you. But either way, like, the song itself doesn't even, like, sound sexy or anything no, like that. You no, know? it doesn't. But you got, like, the first song, Prison Song, and it's the most direct you're going to get. And then the next song is supposed to be about, like, drug addiction, but they use it as a metaphor for a tapeworm being inside you and... Like, right. <laughs> when the fuck are we trying to get, like, these metaphors and these nuanced shit? That's why Prison Song is, to me, a much better song than Needles, because it's way mm. more impactful. And yeah. Oh my man. god, the lyrics. Dude, and, and, you know, I'm not fucking, I wasn't thinking of this at all. Of course, these are things that are on my mind, you know, mm. as a black man in America, and so on and so forth. 
But it was just like, and I haven't heard this album in full before. I never heard it in oh, full. Oh, wow. Okay. <clears throat> I've only heard, of course, you know, the big hits mm-hmm. and a couple of the, the minor songs that, like, friends showed me. You know, like, I'm a Surface fan. I'm, I'm not afraid to admit that. I've been a Surface fan of System of a Down. I listened to the big hit singles, but I never actually delved into an album. See, I, and, I have all of the, see, well, no, my bad. I don't have all the albums. Um, I have up to this one. <laughs> Because, um, what well, what we got here in Toxicity, and this may be a controversial statement, is System of a Down's last good album. Because mm. what we got after this is Steal This Album, which is essentially a compilation. And then you get Mesmerize and Hypnotize from, like, 2004-ish. And mm. what you got on this album is kind of a sneak preview of what you're going to get on there, because up until now, System of a Down, uh, the frontman Surge pretty much had the spotlight to himself. He did all the singing, or at least most of it from what I remember. With this album, you get a little bit more Malacane. Yeah. And, uh, I'm not here for fucking Malacane. I, I never <laughs> knew that there was another voice on these songs. I always thought it was him because Serge's voice is so weird yeah. and does so many different things. So when I'd hear another voice, I was like, oh, that must be him too. Like, I just didn't think about it, you know? And, like, M- Malachine is okay at times. I think he works. Like, what, in... what's, a, what's a big song that he's on? Because I'm, I'm trying to think now. Well, in Prison Song, he does the, I buy my crack, my smack, my bitch right here in Hollywood. <laughs> he does oh, that shit. Man. <laughs> and it's like... Oh. Oh, boy. Mm. <laughs> oh, he does those. He's the one who does those, huh? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, now I officially know. Look. <laughs> you know BYOB. <laughs> yes, uh, of course. M- M- Malachi does the why do you always send the poor, like the high pitch <laughs> screech. <laughs> why do you always send the poor? Oh, that's awesome. See, like, at times, his shit works. Like, I don't mind. Yeah. I don't mind him doing the... That's another classic. (laughs) Yeah. I I don't mind him doing the I buy my crack, even though that does kind of derail the message of the song and the tone. Because, I I, I mean, of course, like, yeah, this is the thing specifically. They are very weird, and they inject really weird things, but I actually feel like that one worked, right? Because he was saying, you know, I buy my crack, smack my bitch in Hollywood, and it's like, here's a famous guy doing horrible things, but he's not going to jail. Mm. The normal people are going to jail for doing maybe the exact same thing that this guy's doing. So I actually like that. But see, on the flip side, for when he does the, for you and me to live in, I wasn't a big fan of that. Yeah, that was that was a little. <laughs> he he kind of adds a corniness that sometimes works, sometimes doesn't, and I, that's not even to say the system of a down isn't corny as shit. Sometimes they had the fucking song "Chicken Stew," where it's just basically listing foods. I I don't know, man. System of a down is kind of hit or miss with me. Wow, that's weird. Because I mean, me personally, I absolutely love this album. And maybe this is, like, the best that they get, because you said afterwards they kind of... The next album's a compilation, um, and... It, it's it, This is the last good one. It's not their best. Not in my opinion. I, I would oh, not okay. say this is their best album. It's their last good album. Because I absolutely... I do love this mm. album. Um, I, I And, yeah, there are weird parts. Actually, let's get into it. Yeah. So, um, you have the first song... Rocks hard as shit, bro. It just like, starts right out the fucking gate, and it oh sets the pace. God. It just, and then when Needles starts, it's just like, it's not gonna stop. We're just gonna fucking rock this whole time. And what I love that they do, I love that they do little things that play with the time. Mm, yeah, you know, where, and and like not in like the typical just like offbeat sort of thing where it's just like. It'll be times where you think, like, the song's over, and then it just comes in on a, a strange offbeat again. Yeah. It's just like, ooh, ooh, holy shit. Like, that's so fucking cool. <laughs> oh, man. Um, especially uh, Deer Dance, where that there's that one part where he's, like, humming under himself. And I was confused. Like, I thought that there were words back there, and then I was like, oh, no, it's not. He's just, it just sounds like he's a fan of his own fucking song. He's just like, da 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 I was like, all right. <laughs> See, with this one, with, with Deer Dance, it has a slowed down bridge section with, like, an acoustic guitar. That I liked 
way better mm. than again. I'm just gonna keep shitting on needles when they have when they give Malakane his own. And, and and I know people are gonna say I'm pronouncing his name wrong. I I'm not sure how to either. It's either it's Ma either it's Malachi, Malachi or Malakane. I'm not sure. I'm just I didn't, I know I'm wrong. Um, he has a verse in Needles, and it is such a oh, brick that wall <laughs> that is just like I didn't even really like the song that much to begin with. I thought it was kind of silly with the metaphor, but man, uh, I just he fucking and sours saw it. At him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ooh, I could have done without that for real. <laughs> Sitting in a room with a needle in my hand, just waiting for the tomb of the dying old man. <laughs> and see, the thing is, he's being more direct and actually letting you know what the song's about. And it's not as good as when the song was being silly with the with the fucking tapeworm. Yeah, metaphor. the tapeworm. Yeah, pull the tapeworm out of your ass. Eh? <laughs> I love that. And the, hey, the way it came in on the offbeat afterwards, I was like, holy shit. I just love the musicality of this is absolutely undeniably incredible. I'm going to give you a spoiler. So for people who think I'm shitting on this album, I'm, I'm going to let you know straight off the bat the songs I didn't like. All right? Because there aren't that many. Uh, Needles, these are the ones with the lowest reviews. Okay? And, and, and I'll say this much. Needles may not be as good a song, but you gotta admit, it rocks so hard. And like, there are, there are ghost songs I hear where it's like, it rocks so hard, it's like, fuck it, I don't care what it's about. <laughs> That's true, yeah. You know? Um, ne Needles, Shimmy, and Psycho. I, I understand. Uh, those, I think, are the most... Yeah. Uh, like, Shimmy specifically has very phoned-in lyrics, I thought. And Psycho, like... What would I write down here? Uh, sludgy, uh, sounds distinct compared to everything else on the album, uh, sounds more new metal, uh, but once the lyrics drop, sounds typical for the album, uh, besides the delivery of the lyrics, feels like we've heard this song a few times already. The lyrics are just psycho, groovy, cocaine, crazy. <laughs> I, mm -mm, I wasn't a fan of that. There's a slow guitar riff breakdown that they go to as kind of a standby, and it works for the first couple times. But after a while, it's like, you're going back to this again? All right. You know, like, I like how some of the songs do mix it up and they the, they sound very distinct. But you can almost tell the ones they didn't have as much passion for. Which is weird because in an interview, they said, if a song, if, <clears throat> if we don't like a song, it's not making the album. And some songs that did kind of get scrapped from the um, session ended up on uh steal this album and i'm like really fucking shimmy and psycho they made the cut but some of these other ones didn't i don't know deer dance is such an incredibly intense song and it doesn't even give you a fucking minute to breathe yes! <laughs> that's what i love this album has such personality <laughs> that's what i wrote down that that the breakdown in jet pilot sounds almost identical to the breakdown in Deer Dance, and it's like, their songs back-to-back. Back. They can't be that similar, that close. And I wasn't too crazy about the lyrics of Jet Pilot. X I liked a bit more, but I don't know. Um, yeah, the lyrics for this one were kind of vague. They're very vague. Uh, they're supposed to be about the Armenian genocide, which, for System of a Down, isn't a surprise. That is kind of a go-to. Uh, they do bring that up every so often. But you wouldn't know it if you weren't reading the lyrics along on Genius. And I mean, would you? I mean, the, no. the first verse is, My horse is a shackled old man. His remorse was that he couldn't survey the skies right before, right before they went gray. It's got a very constant energy, palpable rage, more so than some of the other songs like. But because it's so repetitive, it's almost just like... Yeah, I really did like the double time like beat on that one though. It was like faster than the other ones. Um, I just wish they were more interesting lyrics for that one. Like Jet Pilot and X back to back are like, eh. No, I thought X was fucking incredible. <laughs> it was what it, it was. Uh, it also about the Armenian genocide, right? That one worked better, even though it is simpler. But it, it's one of those songs where it's like it rocks so fucking hard that you're just like. I don't fucking care, <laughs> you know? Then we got your fucking modern-day masterpiece. Uh, I wrote down a near-perfect song. 
this is their worst performing song ever, even though it's like, as far as, as far as I knew, I thought this was their most popular. Um, but the reason why is because it was around 9-11 that like every, all the promotion for this kind of really took off. And so it just didn't, it was, and the song ended up being, uh, banned from the radio, the, the light ban for a while because of its darker themes. And it's so weird so, because they went through the trouble of the song. Yeah. Was, the song was originally called Suicide and, and they I changed will say that. that a bad title it is a bad for, title for what this song is doing like it needs a better title than that you well, know i mean what does chop suey mean yeah i would say that even if it is their worst performing chop suey is like if if you're talking about like most iconic songs of the of the first half of the uh the 2000s it's right up there with like mr brightside or like signature iconic songs and even if you don't like chop suey or mr brightside like you can't deny yeah their their impact in their their importance yeah and, it's like man they're just staples yeah man and oh my god i'm remembering being in college and like me and my friends throwing this song and like fucking slamming out to this fucking song bro <laughs> especially at the end jesus man like ah if you don't rock to this i don't know you don't like rock music like <laughs> you know um when it starts off with the like do we even need to talk about this song I, I like we need to just because it's important to do it but it's like you fucking heard it <laughs> but what was fascinating to me was um you know people going into sort of the lyrics and you know really having that moment of like uh, you know, you've heard these lyrics for so long, and then finally seeing someone kind of talk about them and being like, whoa, this song's about someone who's an addict. And, like, the whole, you know, where at first these sound like just silly lyrics because the delivery is so wacky, that, you know, you pay attention, you're like, oh, it's about the, the you know, the insanity that this person's going through and the sort of, like, you know, the the little detail of them being forgetful so they forget their keys. And then, you know, the people are sort of theorizing that, well, maybe they, they forgot their keys because they're not planning on coming home. You know, there's that sort of... I was like, oh, holy shit! And then kind of making it like, no, uh, when I fuck up, it's it, I wanted to do that. Yeah! And the way it treats it so sarcastically, it's just like, you don't have, like, not a lot of, you know, songwriters really take pains to make a song that feels like it has like, real personality to it. Like, like you know, you understood that there was supposed to be some sort of joke or irony to him saying, you wanted to, <laughs> you know? Like, there was supposed to be something ridiculous about that. And, and it was and supposed to be... And the fucking sped up whisper. Like, there's so much personality to that first verse, it's incredible. Oh my god, when it does the fucking... When it does the second... Because the first time, I think it only, uh... The, the, uh, I don't think you trust. Yeah, yeah, it immediately goes into the die, and then the second time it gives you two times where it repeats the really soft chorus, and then it goes really intense, and with the fucking father, I remember that confused the shit out of me. When I first heard it, I was like, what the fuck is going on? Like, how did we get here? How did we get to quoting a Bible verse? I don't understand. And then I looked up some more of the lyrics and how the song is, um, basically ends up being sort of like a, uh, you know, the one thing that we really judge people on is, you know, suicide and suicide attempts. Um, but there is, like, there's the shaming of suicide, but then the, the deification of someone after they do die, right? And what this song kind of was trying to do was sort of being a, uh, not judging someone for having those thoughts. And I was just like, that is such an incredible, like, just angle to, from which to come at this song and paralleling it with Jesus' death, and being kind of like, you know, this person felt like they needed to die, but this person also felt like they needed to die, and I love, it, like, the way someone described it, when they they said, like, you know, it, it, it's saying that, it, it's not saying that, like, killing yourself is good and that you should, it's actually saying that you shouldn't, but it, it's the sort of, like, understanding of that feeling instead of, you know, a, a, uh, a shunning of it. You know, understanding people are going through that. And I was like, wow, that was really sweet. It kind of, finding that out kind of made this song jump up there with uh, the, the song Jumper by Third Eye Blind. Man, like, I'd always loved that song. But then it was like, recently he explained that it was just like, hey, you know, I made this song for people like my cousin who was gay and felt like, you know, they didn't really have a way out. And I was just like, oh my God. And then I re-listened to the song. I was like, oh my God, that's so 
And like, go listen to that song now. Now that you know what it's fucking about. Like, what it's really about. It's just like, wow. And you just have, like, songs like this that are just, like, really... I just feel like they, they speak to, um, you know, what lots of kids probably at the time are going through. And it felt, it, it feels like, like, we're, you know, me, I come into the song and I can enjoy it for the craziness, right? And I feel like, you know, other people are going through a lot more and they turn to music. And I feel like a song like this, that's so, like, that was, that was able to, to be silly and ridiculous, but also really be sympathetic and be saying something to kids. It, it was just like... That, that is the type of, like, writing that you're just like, oh my god. Like, this isn't just a fluke, ridiculous song. Like, this was supposed to be this fucking important. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, oh my god, man. Oh, this is, uh, this is a song especially, Forrest, where it goes, Walk with me, my little friend. Oh, like, yeah. What was that? What was that about? <laughs> man, you fucking... Was that, was that, what's his name? Was that Malachi? <laughs> uh, no, that was Serge. <laughs> you skipped over one of my fucking favorites though fucking bounce is oh yeah i love bounce <laughs> bounce is fucking great and i also have a soft spot in my heart for uh science i think science oh, yeah. has a really cool riff and it's probably the catchiest musically yeah. Um, <laughs> you, you can't deny bounce. It, it's so short, no. like you can't even turn it off when it comes on. We hear that, and it's like, ah, I can't skip this. <laughs> yeah, it's almost it's almost like a little interlude, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, bounce is great. Forest, I really liked. It has this little drum bit leading into the initial drop at the very beginning. Oh, incredible! And I wasn't big on the lyrics, but the riff and the beat of the song. Uh, kind of stole the show for me on that one. It, it, it's interesting how packed a lot of these songs are with messages. Um, yeah, Forest and Atwa. When I kind of looked up the 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 sort of reason why they kind of made these songs, and like this got into kind of a weird territory. So it's like apparently Malachi or Ma- mm. Mal- De- uh, uh, the other guy. <laughs> <laughs> he was talking about like, well, you know, I was reading up on Charles Manson's philosophies, and he's not that bad. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa hold on. <laughs> and now, apparently, what this speaks to is he, um, he did have like, you know, like with all people, no one's ever one hundred percent evil, right? Mm. Uh, so he had like, apparently, uh, him and a couple of his, you know, uh, cohorts or whatever had this sort of thing of like air water animals and like something like basically speaking like these are you know the environment that we need to survive and we need to make sure that we take care of these things right. and the fact that such and such big companies you know they have the power to uh take better care and be better you know stewards of the earth and whatnot but they are not doing that specifically because they can make more money off of uh, not doing so mm-hmm. and who's going to stop them you know and so like it's like it it, it, while reading the whole backstory, you know, at first it's kind of like, what, Charles Manson? No, immediately I'm going to be like, fuck that guy. But then it's just like, well, all right, it did inspire a song that I kind of like, so all right, let me just fucking hear it out. And it's just like, okay, you have a point. You're literally fucking uh, uh, the villain from Black Panther. Because, like, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just like, oh, yeah, that's a very good point. I don't think we should kill people to do that. <laughs> you know, like, this is like, yeah, you know what? This guy has a point. Beyond anything other than that, he does not. But <laughs> See, I, I wish you know? the overall message was conveyed in the song better, though. Because, again, l- listening to it, you really wouldn't pick up on that. And it's like you're basing that on a whole philosophy of air, air trees, water, animals. And it's like... Yeah, it's still very vague. I kind of appreciate the vagueness in this specific sense because I kind of think, like, it. this is especially the environment. That's a topic where if you get too specific, it's going to sound preachy. That's you know? true. So yeah. I was kind of like, yeah, all right, maybe it does work. You but know see, what I mean? The thing is, and we, we I, I didn't mention it earlier when we were talking about Prison Song, but a r- reason I like that song so much is that... <laughs> that was very direct. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's a song at first, but then kind of by the end, Surge just kind of says fuck it to it being a song and just starts Ooh. talking to you about shit. 
<laughs> like, yeah. like, yeah, he's singing, but he's not singing the same way. Like, he's almost yeah. just saying, fuck it. It just straight up sounded like a rap verse. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, like, right now, the, the message is more important than the song. You need to hear this. I don't care if it doesn't sound good. Like, I need to get this across. And it was like, all right. And yeah, it did almost kind of sound preachy now that you say, like, being less direct, you know, making it more of, like, an artistic thing. That yeah. that could be the possible uh, reason that. But the other thing is I didn't really care about the song is, I, and again, I never really heard it until I was listening super close and reading along, but they put a small warble effect on Surge at times where there's, like, a little kind of, like, almost like an underwatery and maybe that was intentional but it just kind of sounded weird and uh towards the end malachine screaming anymore was pretty cringy oh we forgot to mention science science was definitely a dope ass track i love the way it, it it came at the angle of criticizing science but not from a like a ludite version of it where it's like oh you know, we shouldn't have science at all, it's evil. But it was sort of framing it in the sense of, like, you know, science has failed our world. It's failed Mother Earth in the sense of, like, you know, the way we utilize uh, um, the things that have advanced the erosion of our Earth are literally the things that we've been, you know, the technology that we've been creating, you know? So there is that sort of ignoring of uh, our, our role to take care of the Earth in favor of, but, you know, we've already invested in these, you know, unclean uh, coal cars, so we're just going to stick with those instead of doing the electric car, which could be a really easy fucking transition. You know what I mean? And so it's like, oh, I kind of I kind of like that. Like, I, I like how it did that instead of doing the fucking, you know, the let's destroy all computers. You know what I mean? The album ends up with two of the other big uh, singles, uh, Toxicity and aerials. We didn't aerials. Even fucking get to aerials. <laughs> Maybe my favorite song from them of all fucking time. Mm. Oh my god! Really? In the video, yes, I love this song. Mm. The the melodies, the everything is just so it just so perfect. No, and like it's their weirdness, but it's not. It never gets too weird, you know? Yeah. I'm not really f that fond or interested in Ariel's, really? honestly. No, it just didn't really hit me as hard as it oh, did you. Man. I I've never been that mm. fond of the song. I don't think it's bad. I just don't think it's particularly interesting. No, I always thought that the little... <laughs> that was always like the, ah, that shit hit. Uh, it is one of those songs where you do kind of wish there was more, like, lyricism in it. You know, because like, the, the, the life is a waterfall, we drink from the river, then we turn around and put up our walls. And I was like, I could use some, I could use some extra help explaining what you're talking about. Aerials in the sky, when you lose small mind, you free your life. Now, as much as I love, I do love this chorus, again, I think this song is awesome, that line is kind of like, it's the chorus, so it should at least be the most cohesive, but it does kind of confuse me, but just in like the tenses... When you lose mm. small mind, you free your life. Like, when you lose small mind. Like, it's just, like, people don't talk like that. And, you know and, what it, I mean? and it repeats it a lot. So it's yeah, like... Yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah, and, and I didn't realize that. It's like, oh, it's just that verse. <laughs> yeah. Overall, I, I kind of surprised myself. But I came out with a three. Whoa. <laughs> Uh, man, I definitely agree with, disagree with you on that one. This is a four and a half for me. Woo! This shit's fire. This shit fire. <laughs> Even if you don't fuck with rock music, like, you gotta fuck with this album. Like, at least that first song. At the very least. <laughs> Prison song and science and chop suey and aerials and toxicity and I'm just naming the song from the album now. <laughs> I'm just naming all the songs. I'm just like, wait, I like that one too. And I mean, yeah, that was weird, but you definitely need to listen to it. Like, that's literally how I feel about any of the songs I don't like. It's just like, yeah, it's weird, but you just still listen to it. <laughs> uh, let's get to the album that, that everyone's talking about. Or at least until at least until we put our review out. And everyone's going to for forget about it. But <laughs> fucking Oxnard was the fucking talk of the town when it first dropped. And... Since we took the week off for Thanksgiving, uh, nobody's talking about it anymore. <laughs> Fucking of course. <laughs> but fuck that, because it's worth it. I'm not surprised, because as much as I like Anderson Pack, 
I don't know, like, I don't think people are thinking about him that much. Which is really messing with me, because I'm like, are you guys not hearing this? Are you guys not hearing this? <laughs> you know what I mean? I can totally see how most people, like, the general audience, wouldn't fuck with this. What? Why? This is incredible. B- this because is... because it isn't fucking pop hooks, and, you know, oh, but, you know, oh, re- re- but... I- I'm not saying me. I'm yeah, saying the I general I, audience. I don't think this hits it. Like, this is kind of niche, I think. Th- this is an ex- you know, this is an experience. It's sort of like, cause especially the way it starts off with the, the sort of 70s uh, chase music. The song's literally called The Chase. Like, I'm listening to the song and how it starts, you know, do, revving up with the, the bass line and where it's going. It's like, ooh, this sounds like some chase music. What? Oh, it's called The Chase. Ch- All right. <laughs> It's like, okay, so you knew what was happening here, too. All right. I'm not just, you know, I'm not just interpreting what this sounds like. You know what I mean? No, nah, but uh, with me personally, my history with Anderson Pack is that I've listened to his last two albums when they dropped, and this is my favorite of them so far. And I really like that last one, Malibu. I thought that was a great album. Um, and this one's better, you say? This is... Ma- Malibu has more moments of songs that... Not exactly skip overable, but don't really stand up. They, they, they don't really don't stack. Pop. They don't pop. Exactly. This album is almost, if not 100%, just unskippable. It's nonstop. It's so fucking good. The first three songs. <laughs> when you get the chase, what is like this cool, lush sort of homage to the 70s. But it's like, it, it. I love it when an artist does an homage in a way that does not feel derivative, right? Because yeah. it still feel like it's building on the sound when you hear the chase. Especially, like, mm. the first minute. It's like, just, it, 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 there's not even a beat yet. It's just, like, a whole bunch of music and just, like, it's just preparing you for the intro. I was like, this is what I like in an intro. It's like, ah, get ready for this shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um... And then you have Head Low, which completely, like, we have the first song, which is, like, this really cool song. Got a waterfall of beautiful tones and harmonies coming out. It's real nice. And the next song is about getting head while driving. <laughs> <laughs> and, when, like, when I had the slow realization of, like, uh, oh. oh. <laughs> and, yeah, like, my, I was, like, my mouth, like, slowly dropped as I realized what was happening. I was, like, oh, uh, oh. <laughs> And then I was like, I was like, I pity whoever has the censored version of this album. Oh yeah, <laughs> because there's literally like a blowjob simulation on part of this song, and I don't even want to spoil how it ends. Just fucking listen to it. <laughs> and and you know, Headlow is probably like my least favorite on the album. Like it's wow, probably, <laughs> yeah. Like I think it only gets better from there. Honestly, uh-huh. um, fucking tense with Kendrick. You know, Man. it's funny. When I was listening to this and I heard Kendrick on it, it kind of reminded me of, uh, what was it called? Unmastered, Untitled. How the songs uh, yeah. on there kind of had the same s- funk energy. Dude, I could swear one of these fucking songs was on there. <laughs> yeah, it almost feels like Pac was like, oh, is that all you're going to do with those songs? Okay, I'm going to fucking do a full album of that shit and I'm <laughs> right. going to have you on it if only for Wait. a few minutes. Wait, you you were gonna do anything new with that jazz sound you were working on? Uh, all right, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is like this is the same thing. You know what it is? It's like uh, Kendrick didn't want to do uh, the album they did last year, so Anderson Pac uh, did that album, even though he moved on to do something new. Um, Kanye didn't want to do My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy anymore, so Travis Scott's like, all right, I'll make that album. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, You know, Kanye didn't want to make a gospel album that actually worked, so Chance stepped in and said, okay, I'll make that Mm -hmm. album. You know, it's just like... (laughs) They're paying attention to the trends and what people want, and it's like, all right, okay. There's there's definitely an interest. Um, And and it does... You know, what I like about it, though, is that it doesn't... I'm liking that these particular artists don't feel derivative when they're doing it. No, not at all. There, it's so easy to like listen to an artist and just be like, "Man, you just you know ripping their style." Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But it, it, it's another thing when you hear someone go like, "Ooh, it sounds like you're building on that style." You yeah, know? I I never got the sense that and that fucking pack was doing anything like ripping anyone off or like mm-hmm. th- e- even though it was a, a very like distinct familiar sound he fucking made it his own 
like yeah. o- over and over again on this fucking mm-hmm. album. Um, Who Are You is the only song I didn't like as much. Just because oh, it didn't feel really? I mean, it didn't I, feel... I, I got what you, I, I, I say what you mean. Yeah. Yeah, like it just didn't feel as focused. Like the first mm-hmm. time listening to it, I definitely liked it. But as soon as I'm like paying attention to the hook and how it's kind of like underwhelming, like, who are you? Who the fuck is this? I don't know. What do you do? I don't know. Are you short a few? And then, ooh, don't make me have to lose it. Oh, no, hold up. I pulled a sticky out the jar. I was like, all right, that didn't rhyme. I'm not sure why you're short a few dollars. I thought you were supposed to be rich. Why don't people know who you are? Are you, You're going to go crazy because you don't have a couple of dollars? Like, what the hell's going on? You know what I mean? Like, the song just, the chorus just felt disjointed. And so because of that, it kind of, like, doesn't help with everything else. You know? I see what you mean. And you just reminded me when you're talking about short a few dollars... I was so surprised that Bublin wasn't on this album. Have you heard that song? Oh my god! I yeah, what the fuck? Bublin. And oh the, my god, dude, like, my roommate plays that song all the fucking time. That, that's the fucking non-album single? Damn it! I was what's, really hoping that was gonna be going on here. What's going on? What's going on? He fucking See, now, gave usually, you... Like, the, what would have been the smash of the fucking album, he was like, nah, you could just have this one. Like, he had that much confidence in the album that it didn't need bubbling? No fucking way. <laughs> Something wrong happened. And Something then it's like, happened. you know what? It didn't need bubbling. <laughs> it was good enough on its own. <laughs> Damn. That really should have been on this fucking album, though. <laughs> it's gonna be on the oh, fucking deluxe fuck. or some shit. Yeah, holy shit, why would they waste that? What's going on? What's really good? And in this <laughs> the age of streaming, aren't we trying to, you know, didn't Nicki Minaj tack on that fucking Fifi song oh, with uh, uh, Takashi just to get some yeah. extra, you know, fucking stream? I, you know you know what it is? He was specifically, you know, it, it, he, he was in a marketing meeting, right? This is the myth making that we're doing right here. Oh, okay. Uh, he, was, he was in the marketing meeting, they're like, we got it. That's your smash it single. Everyone's loving it. We put that on the album. It already goes platinum before, you mm. know, before people even listen to the rest of it. And he was, you know, sitting back. He's like, we could just, you know, get that title real easily. I refuse. Yes. <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> like, nah, we're going to do it on the strength of of the whole project in and of itself. Not just a, a throwaway single that I made, you know? And um, then yeah. the album is kind of not done as well since the opening week. Ugh. Fuck me, man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fuck people. <laughs> By the that's why we're here. We're here to give it that second that second wind. There you go. <laughs> that's what we're <Yeah>. doing. <laughs> you just reminded me, by the way. Remember when uh the movie Bohemian Rhapsody came out and everyone and <laughs> yeah, everyone you said that like it's a couple years ago. <laughs> and, and everyone was talking about Queen. And fucking Nicki Minaj went on the Billboard chart or like the trending topics, and she was like, "Ah, eh, look, Queen's trending," <laughs> and everyone had to be like, "You might want to sit down." <laughs> I didn't know about that. Yeah, she posted like a screenshot of the trending topics, like on her Snapchat oh, or Instagram, no! and she thought that people were so talking about her ass. <laughs> People had to tell her, it's like, nah, people are talking about a fucking rock band from 40 years ago. Oh, that's so awkward. What did she say? Please tell me. She, like, said something like, whoops, baby. Ah, she just ignored that shit. Oh, god fucking damn it. She just pretended that shit never happened. Damn. She just gotta walk away. Uh, but back to this. Um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, while you were thinking of a lyric or looking something up, I'd mentioned it to you that, um... For the past few days now, the line, this shit gone bang for at least six summers, has been fucking Woo. stuck in my Whoa. head. And the song, the song itself the is, it's almost the star of the album, if I dare yes. say. It's it's like the centerpiece. And it's so early on that it feels mm. kind of weird to be that fucking, like, the big attention grabber. But, uh, it's, it, it not only... <laughs> Is it a fucking, like, anti-Trump taking a look at what's going on politically, but it also fucking, like, pays attention to, like, the rise in shootings at the same time? Man, and it does both, like, it does both in a way that doesn't feel like a protest song. No, but it it just feels like a fucking bop. Like, he's just fucking hanging out, just off the fucking top of his head, just like... (laughs) Yeah, you know, I'm gonna talk about Trump for a second. Yeah, I'm gonna talk about guns for a second. Like, oh man, the way he started the song, yo, you forever have.
I have my respect. We look, Mr. Pac. <laughs> can if we I have dare. you on the show, <laughs> can I call you Anderson? <laughs> right, Mr. Anderson. <laughs> <laughs> look, with that first line when he just belted out, "Trump's got a love child," and I hope that bitch is buck wild. <laughs> I hope she sent Mescal. I hope she kissed senoritas and black gals. I was like, oh, shit. That is, oh, shit. That is then, goddamn kicking the doors open. And then when you look it up and you find out he actually does have an illegitimate love child with yeah. a woman who is a minority. And you're like, oh, shit. <laughs> I like Yo. that out of the whole thing that you could possibly shit on Trump for. He's like, now I'm gonna talk about this one super personal thing. <laughs> can I can I say this? Fucking uh 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 I, I I'm gonna say this officially. Your boy Anderson Pac push a teed Trump just now. <laughs> oh <laughs> You are hiding a child, Mr. Trump. <laughs> Savior's Road, which is the first track where it feels like he just, he actually like kind of raps a full verse, you know, w- with the sort of a uh, sing rap style that he does. I love, I love, by the way, that uh, it, we seem to just be accepting the Bone Thugs and Harmony route of making hip hop now. <laughs> he is just kind of playing it middle of the road, but not in like a Drake way. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And, and, like it's like the sort of like black way, except I feel like. Like, Tory Lanez and Black, the two dudes who are kind of, like, known for the trap soul, they pale in comparison to the personality of uh, Anderson Pac. Like, you know what I mean? I, I remember saying when we reviewed that shit that there was, like, <coughs> I've never heard such little emotion in songs that should have had emotion. Like, Black it, just does not the, have range when it comes the to polar that shit. fucking opposite. <laughs> We got, like, this album is so much fucking fun, and it's full of personality. There's so many moments on here, and we'll get to them, but it's yeah. like, it takes it takes so many, like, I, I was going to say it takes chances, but it doesn't take chances. It just, it just has fun with it, and I think a lot of yeah. people are afraid to do that, especially, like, in rap, but, like, he's doing rap and singing so effortlessly that... Like, you almost don't even notice that he switches it up. Because they're just, like, he has the same skill level. Yeah, and I think it's because he he enters the game as a singer, right? Mm. Where, 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 whereas it felt like with uh, with Drake a lot of times, like, or with a lot of artists, the fact that they said that they were singers felt like an excuse for the fact that they weren't good rappers. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, oh, oh no, I'm not really... Uh, Fetty Wap, he was good for that when he was like, oh, I'm uh, not really rapping, you yeah. know, so don't judge me as a rapper, but I'm not really a singer, so don't really judge me as a singer. And it's just like, well, I, if you're not good at either, then you're, then you're just not a good artist. <laughs> yeah, and then <laughs> you know? I'm just not going to listen to your ass. <laughs> In comes fucking Anderson Pac, showing, showing the boys how it needs to be done. <laughs> for real. Not even um, joking here. The one track I uh, didn't dig as much. Okay, so it was Who Are You and Mansa Musa I didn't dig as much. And the only reason I felt like I actually mm. liked that song more was because that chorus is absolutely incredible. Where he says, the, uh, he says the, I got some money to blow. I'm looking good, bitch. Even as the king, I stay hood rich. Oh, the way he said that. As the king. I love that shit. Dude. No, no, no. The one I didn't like was a <laughs> smile slash petty. I wasn't as big on that one. Yeah, uh, the Fucking first Mansa half I didn't Musa like. was so good. It has uh, so know... like I don't even care. Just the energy. <laughs> it's so much fun. That song. Yeah, I love yeah. it. He he sounds like he's having such a good time. I know. I got you. But man, I couldn't let these verses go. Okay. Uh, Coco Sarai when she comes in mm. for, I didn't even know she was rapping until like about like 10 seconds into her verse or whatever I was just like wait she she goes uh my money money pockets this dummy dummy I was like wait what what's happening <laughs> oh no are you really doing this and I was like oh no I liked everything up until now no 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 <laughs> just, what's that huh what uh, yeah and then she, she says that that mean my money's so sick I might just cough up a hundred but the line was, my pockets are so dummy. Yeah. That means my money is so sick. No, it doesn't. Dummy is not a reference for someone being sick. What are you talking about? Mm. But anyway, yeah. But all right. My money's so sick, I might come up 100. And then, rich gal in me own time zone. Fuck whoever. Well, that 
definitely didn't run. <laughs> like, you know, it was just like, oh my god, oh god, this is all bad, oh no. <laughs> and then, and then Dr. Dre, oh, <laughs> <laughs> trying to be cool, try, trying to be cool, huh? <laughs> trying to switch up the flow and be all like, up. And I'm like, I now, Dr. Dre has always been sort of like, you know, using other people's styles. Like, I get that. He's just a producer. Oh, yeah. But here, it felt particularly like, like, if you're going to write for Dr. Dre, you have to know how to write for Dr. Dre. Yeah, and that's true. I feel I feel like Snoop Dogg knows how to write for Dr. Dre. Eminem mm-hmm. knows how to write for Dr. Like, the early guys that were there know how to write. And it just felt like whoever is writing this verse it is probably Anderson Pac. It just doesn't feel like he's doing it as well because it doesn't work with how his voice works like he's trying to do a higher voice flow and it's just like what is this you know like it just doesn't fit him i think it would have fit him if he was more did that more chill husky voice because he doesn't the higher energy stuff doesn't fit as well dude if if you had issues with the fucking dr dre (laughs) cameo all is forgiven (laughs) you fucking push a t oh my lord Yes, Lord. fucking makes up for that shit. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Lord. <laughs> Your boy, Pusha T, mm-hmm. comes through with the fucking haymaker. No, he doesn't even start the verse yet. He doesn't even start his verse yet. You just hear, first of all, this fucking beat is just so fucking chilled out. Yeah. it's It, it allows the artist to breathe, man. It's so, like, fucking open and spaced out the beat. And, like, I'm just, like, I'm listening to this with, like, I don't even need to hear anyone rap. If Pusha T just talks shit over this, that would be fine. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know, sometimes people do that. You know what I mean? Um, But he starts off, he says, 9 a.m., L.A. time. My brother just turned down half a million dollars for being one half of the greatest duo in hip-hop history. And I couldn't love him more. I was like, oh. (laughs) You know, it was just, like, like, strangely... Really sweet moment. Yeah. <laughs> from, from fucking Pusha T. And I was like, yo, man. Like, that's that's straight up and down. That's that's legit, man. Yeah. You, you, got, you, you get the rap critic uh, uh, rap critic hat nod from me for that. <laughs> like, yo, like, it doesn't even fucking matter because blood's more important than fucking money. I was like, holy shit, man. Mm. Fucking respect. And then he comes in with the verse and it's just like, I don't even need to fucking say it at that point. <laughs> Look, the only thing I did not like... Mm. Was at 237. Pusha T's verse is done. You have the ride out. Everything's perfect. And then for some reason, there's another minute and a half of the song that, like, is actually anticlimactic. Mm, and, like, okay, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, it takes the really open space of the beat and then just kind of, like, crushes the momentum that was going with that and kind of makes it, like, just this chill out thing. And I thought it was the next track, but it was like, oh, no, this is the same song? Oh, well, all right. And it kind of builds it up a little bit, but it just felt like weirdly taking away the momentum of such an epic guest verse, you know? What'd you think about Snoop? (laughs) Completely out of place. Oh, Snoop, the best worst rapper of all time, uh, officially dubbed by the Going Off podcast. See, Uh, like, I I like Snoop personally, (laughs) right? Like, he seems like a super cool dude. I saw his fucking acceptance speech at the walk of fame where he just in front of a crowd of people said snoop dog you wouldn't bad motherfucker like snoop's <laughs> a cool ass dude and i love him he seems like such a great guy never really in love with this stuff i remember that one time we reviewed that one album of his that like nobody really talked about his like new album from like last year and it was uh... surprisingly okay yeah, yeah, I remember that. Because <laughs> he put out, like, three in the last year, and I was trying to remember which one. But it's just kind of like, his guest verses are never amazing, but they just kind of... You're here to hear the voice of Snoop. It doesn't matter who he's actually saying. Yeah, and, it, yeah, that's true. And, this, and here we have the return of the irrelevant guest rap verse. But it's particularly jarring here because it's first. So the yeah. first verse is like about, yeah, remember me, Snoop Dogg, back in the old days when I used to be, you know, before I was rapping. And I was like, all right, this is kind of okay, or, you know, whatever. Mm. And then you're hearing the chorus and the verses, and it's like, wait, this is about, like, how you're going to make love to this girl and using all these R&B song and, you know, artist metaphors. And I was like, well, what the fuck did that have to do with Snoop Dogg then? <laughs> yeah. 
So, yeah, that was purely there just because, holy shit, I need to get Snoop Dogg on a song, and he's not even paying attention to what the song's about, but fuck it, I got Snoop Dogg, so... We got a fucking one, two, three, four hit combo to fucking wrap the album out, though. We got Trippy with J. Cole, Cheers with Q-Tip, Sweet Chick with DJ the Chicago Kid, and Left to Right. (laughs) Oh, my God. We got to take this one at a time. (laughs) Oh, boy. In a row. I don't think we've ever complimented J. Cole (laughs) on a guest verse. He had a good one here. Look, man. Okay, so uh, do you remember that verse on that Miguel song? You bring that up every time, and I've never heard it. I still haven't heard it. Oh, man, you really need to. (laughs) Because it reminded me of this. I was like, holy shit. It's like, now I have two R&B, like, eccentric artists with verses from J. Cole that I can listen to. Yay! (laughs) I think it was when he was on Astro World. You, you you mentioned uh the Miguel uh the Miguel verse. Oh yeah, yeah. Because his verse on Astro World uh wasn't that great. But yeah, I thought he delivered here and fucking dude. Dude. Cheers. Man. My god. Like I uh I don't even know what to say, dude. I, it's I, like, I, I, it's the most, you know how we were just complimenting on how he does songs, He, he like he talks about um, hot button issues that are important to him, but he doesn't come off sounding preachy. Yeah. He fucking straight up wrote like a tribute song to one of his best friends that had just passed away only a few months ago. And it's not, like, a downer? No. How? How did you do that? <laughs> and I, it still works. It's It works so good. Uh, but I will say, the only reason it was a downer was Yo. when I realized why, Q, why Q-Tip was there. Oh, man. Because at first, I was like, wow, imagine that. Imagine being, like, imagine, like, looking down, right? And you're like, man, my man, Anderson Peck, writing this tribute song to me that means so much. (laughs) Wow, Q-Tip. And then it's like, oh, fuck, he's talking about Fife Dog. Oh, I don't know if I can handle this. (laughs) (laughs) Right? Like... Oh, and when he breaks at one point, oh, oh, you hear a vocal inflection change for a second, and it's just like, uh oh, oh, I gotta pause this. (laughs) Oh, because he talks about, like, grown men crying, and, like, the voice cracks a little bit, it's like, "Mm mmm. Oh, man. (laughs) For a man who who has been creating work for over two decades. Yeah. Someone who... As a critic, I will admit, I have not been the biggest fan of their work. Right, yeah. This may be the absolute best verse that he has ever written. <laughs> so goddamn like, good. The song is so good. Holy God. Like, it's almost like Q-Tip fucking heard that I didn't like a Tribe Called Quest. <laughs> like, oh, or, fuck that. We're going to make the best music of our entire career in the past two years. Just to make you eat those fucking words, mm-hmm. asshole. <laughs> and yo, I'm gonna t- I'm gonna go head down to the store. I'm head down to the Target. Get the biggest fucking humble pie I can find. <laughs> Holy God, man! Oh, fucking, fucking Q-tip. Cheers, man. fucking yeah, cheers. Man. And then, as a little palate <laughs> cleanser, sweet chick, dude. <laughs> Every time we, I think that the, that uh, the song we're talking about is my favorite, we come to the next one. You forget. <laughs> it's like, oh, shit, I forgot about Sweet Chick. Oh, oh, man. Oh, I can't even say what happens in this song. No. You gotta listen to this it's, shit it's right just... here. <laughs> uh, all these different women that that You know the song. With. Yeah, you yeah. know the typical song. The, the girls, 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 you know. Yeah, uh, or 
uh, to quote another song, another genre, girls, girls, girls. There's a lot of girls. Bow. It, it, it's a fucking <laughs> tired trope, but again, it's fucking not... MF Doom's made songs about it. You know, my favorite ladies. It's always oh, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it's 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 he fucking breathes new life mm-hmm. into what is otherwise a pretty boring cliche. He fucking makes it work. It's such a great <sighs> song. It's it's, it's it's funny. It's if there's any song, guys. You gotta stop this fucking podcast right now and listen to this song. And we're not overhyping it in any way. No, no. And and I will say, the the album might end anticlimactically after that with Left to Right. Like, holy shit, how is that not the last song? But it's still a catchy as fuck song. I literally had that moment. I had that moment when the next song started because I remember like, oh, it's not the last song. And then going like... Man, no, they should have just ended it there. And then halfway through the song being like, eh, I like this one too, <laughs> I was it, like, it, ah, shit, I can't. Like, I was trying to be, I was actively trying to be the, yeah, but this was a really strong note. You should, you know, like fucking like uh, the uh, Eminem's album, you know, where it ended on Kim. And it's oh, like, ah, oh, yeah. I should have ended here. But then it goes to the next song. And it's like, I mean, it's not like this song is bad, but why didn't you end it there, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I, 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 I guess it's like, Left to right almost kind of feels like an encore. Yeah, and, and you gotta have the party song. You know? Yeah, mm-hmm. the and it up fucking party works, song. man. It, it it's a fucking great one. Yeah, how is this not on the top of the charts right now? I do not understand. I uh, I feel like I used to be too uh liberal with my fives, and I feel like mm. a five should be like a a, a five needs to be important you know like it needs Mm. to stand out and there's just a couple songs on here that aren't i know what you're saying and and i i want to say somewhere between a four and a four and a half because i can't give it the five i give it that four and a half i because you're right there are the you know mansu musa chorus is electric but like two thirds of the verses, you know, uh, and, and your boy Anderson Pog actually kind of saves the day at the end. He mm-hmm. does come back, uh, but it's just like two thirds of the song I don't want to listen to. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, yeah. first half of Smile was, you know, a little boring, but mm-hmm. you know, it was just me. Um, but so many songs over uh, on this album make up for that in 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 droves. Yeah. Um, in a w- the good songs are really good. <laughs> like they don't they not only outnumber it, but they kind of make any moments that aren't as enjoyable like you forget about them. You know how when you listen yeah. to some albums and it's like some moments will ruin an album. You know, like some right. moments and it's like it never gets to that point and everything is Mm-mm. so good like I like the first time I listened to it, I forgot that there were points that I didn't like, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, because you're fucking stuck sitting there singing Six Summers and you forgot all about how weak <laughs> you know, one or two of the other songs were, because it doesn't fucking matter. Yeah. Nah, man, I, I'm absolutely buying this one. Like, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm picking this one up. I suggest everyone <laughs> check this album out, and I feel like not. I feel like it's not gonna get nearly as much love a, as it deserves, so, man, just fucking take it from us if you don't hear it from anyone else, but I'm sure you will. Maybe fucking Dead End Hip Hop, uh, Fantano might, you know fucking show it some love but seriously even though you're not gonna hear the songs on the radio like you should be some of these are absolutely fucking 100 percent ready-made these should be on the fucking the hip-hop stations and they're probably not gonna get this they're probably not gonna get the play and it if it always fucking ends up like that right like the one anderson pock song that i wasn't that big on was the one that fucking got all the play. The, um... Wait, got the feeling that you might that's... be... Hi! That is him! <laughs> yeah. And yeah. it's so, like, what the fuck yeah. ever. But the rest of the oh. album is so good. And I remember that, too, because I remember when that song came out, being like, it's okay. You know, like, yeah. I, I considered him amongst the Tory lanes as in the in the blacks, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It was like, mm, this, I'll let this live, you know what I mean? But it was just like... Holy shit! Fuck that song. <laughs> there, there were fucking songs Never mind that, that shit. <laughs> no, there were fucking songs on that album that were way fucking better, and I don't think anyone yeah. paid attention to them because they fucking led with "High" or whatever the fuck that song was called. Yeah. This wasn't that good, but no, take it from you boys. 
the the Bad Boys <laughs> podcast and giving this one the seal of approval. And uh, like we had mentioned earlier about toxicity, and you might be sitting there wondering, yeah, of course they're talking about Oxnard. Everyone was talking about Oxnard a couple weeks ago, but no one's talking about toxicity in 2018. Why the fuck are the going off podcast reviewing toxicity from System of a Down? Going on tour at some music festival, and I'm already looking forward to seeing the video of sad, lifeless Surge <laughs> with oh, the fucking man. passion when gone from his face. Me the video, oh my god, of him just looking like this is just a fucking nine to five job. Like oh. that is the deadness with which he was just like, and now I have to say this. Oh, fucking these people, and now I have to say this. He's fucking Ed <laughs> Norton in Fight Club. <laughs> it's like fucking. God damn, man. <laughs> I know you're sitting there wondering those things. Reason is, goddamn Patreon. If you haven't heard, you can request albums to be reviewed on the show. So head on over to either patreon.com slash rapcritic or patreon.com slash muse for details. Find out how you can request an album that we probably wouldn't have ever talked about if it wasn't for that request. And uh, follow us on Twitter while you're at it. Uh, check us out on Teespring. We both have fucking merch on there now. Hey. Hey, fucking making some of that side money. Yeah. Because YouTube is unreliable as fuck. So. <laughs> and Patreon can be kind of sketchy too. So why not <laughs> check out that sweet, sweet merch. And uh, if this is your first time listening to us, all of our old episodes are on SoundCloud and iTunes. Just search Going Off Podcast. And until next week for the Going Off Podcast, I'm Muse. And I'm Rap Critic. When I became the sun, I shone the life in a man's heart. When I became the sun, I shone the life in a man's heart.